Hey everybody, Rennie at Cycle News here over right in front of me. Hi, I'm Jesse. The beautiful Jay-Z, Jesse Ziegler. Here for another comparison test for you. Uh, this time we have the 2024 BMW F900 GS. Now this is the brand new model from BMW, replaces the old 850. And we're throwing it up against old Betsy, the bike that always does well in, in comparison tests. We're throwing it against the KTM 890 Adventure R. So I'm going to throw it over to Jay-Z because he's had tons of experience on Too much. the Adventure R. Too much so, time. What are we dealing with here? Well, we're dealing with a KTM product that's getting a little long in the tooth, I think. We've had the 790 Adventure, 790 Adventure R since, gee, I don't even remember when that was, 2017, 18 yeah. was when that was launched. And good updates with the 890 platform. I think they got the motor right. They got the uh, crank weight right so it gets better low end traction and honestly it's the best off-road adventure bike that's ever been created arguably the old generation 950 990s are still like you know waving their flag pretty hard there too but modern day it's an amazing bike right but it hasn't really been updated updated in yeah. quite a long time we get a we get a facelift with new fairing that gives it a little bit more rally look gets get rid of the bug face a little bit but really the bike's not that much updated yeah, since I, since it became an 890R. I remember doing the 750 launch, 750, 790 launch yeah. back in, what, 2017, <laughs> 2018? sometime, yeah. Yeah, and it has, you can draw a direct lineage to that. <laughs> For sure. Which, funnily enough, is pretty un-KTM because yeah. KTM... Uh, almost getting a bad reputation now for changing the models almost every <laughs> Too fastly, year. right. And so they don't have any continuation, whereas the 790, 890 models... They are a direct lineage, and you can keep that development going. So, it, it, We know what we're getting here with the 890 Adventure. Uh, it is proven. It is aggressive. It, it is an off-road, ready-to-race bike. Yep. Okay, so throwing it up against the brand-new BMW F900 GS. I've got a look at my notes here, ladies and gentlemen. Otherwise, <laughs> you're going to get misinformation and lies because there's too much stuff to, to remember. Now, bear in mind also that the GS never, ever comes as standard. Once you buy a GS, you are going to get some kind of package which we'll get into, but at, at its base, we're looking at 895cc versus 889cc, both parallel twins. So we've got 105 horsepower and 105 horsepower, although the BMW makes it at 8.5 and, and the KTM makes it at 8,000 RPM. KTM makes a fair amount more torque, uh, six pounds feet more torque at 6,500. So they're doing 74 pounds feet versus 68 pounds feet at 8,500. Now that is an interesting point because that gives you a bit of an idea into what the BMW engine's like. Yeah, it's really starting to lay the blueprint for the character of these bikes yeah. really closely. So we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more, but as we go further down the list uh, for the front suspension for the BMW, and this is where you start getting into the packages, uh, we had 45 mil uh, gold shower forks, fully adjustable. Uh, Beautiful as, fork. As, yeah, Beautiful as part fork. of the Enduro Pro package and f the KTM had 48 mil WP Explorer forks, which have been on it for donkey's years, pretty much. It's a very, very well-known fork. Okay, so what makes the BMW interesting is the fact that you cannot buy a BMW stock. That's been one of the big bugbearers of adventure riders forever. Once you buy a BMW, it comes with some form of package. Mm -hmm. And our bike came with everything, shall we say. Base package for the BMW is $14,190, but what we got is the GS Trophy paint job that adds 545 bucks. Then we got the premium package at 1750 which includes the M Endurance chain, the keyless ride, which I hate, the <laughs> GPS prep, tire pressing monitoring, cruise control, which I love, gear shift assist pro, which is a quick shifter for those that don't know, mm -hmm. ride modes assist pro, and that adds dynamic enduro, enduro pro throttle modes plus engine drag torque control. Going on further, we got the Enduro Pro package for $1,495, and that includes four, the larger 45 mil forks that we talked about yes. uh, from Showa and a, a Sax slash uh, ZF shock. Mm -hmm. um, the Intelligent Emergency Call, which we got caught out on a couple of times. Yeah, that, that pesky key. Yeah. And tipping the bike over yeah, it so really it, wants you to be safe and if you tip the bike over it really wants to call the police yeah we did the that bike a couple of times tried to call the police it did. <laughs> <laughs> the bike tried to call it cops on us <laughs> so that uh, enduro pro package cost us 345 bucks and then you've got the metzler crew fours which are some of the best 
off-road tyres or 50-50 tyres that you can get on yeah. the market. Absolutely love them. Uh, funnily enough, as part of that package, they only cost 65 bucks, but mm-hmm. that's part of the package that you get. You've yeah. got to buy that from a BMW dealer. If you normally just go and buy the tyres, it costs you about 300 bucks a set. Right. All said and done, the KTS, sorry, the BMW costs us 18390 bucks, which is a fair chunk of change for... Yeah. Bike. yeah, it's really knocking this uh, mid-size ADV price uh, up a lot. Yeah. Most of these bikes we're used to seeing in the 15 to 16K range, and this one's pushing 19K. Uh, you are getting a lot for it. That's it, Like yeah. I got to say, you're getting gold forks. The gold wheels are sexy. Like the bike looks fantastic. I say that later. Yeah. But um, you're getting all the bells and whistles the BMW has. Well, that's that's it. That's, that's it. all you the bells and whistles. You can't buy anything else yeah, from BMW. There's no more bell or whistle that you can buy with <laughs> Unless this. Unless you get... Ewan McGregor to write it for you. Exactly. Okay, so the KTM base price is a touch more than the BMW at 15799 bucks, But we got the optional tech pack fitted, which was $734.99. And that includes the quick shifter, motor slip regulation, and cruise control. And we also got the rally pack. And the rally pack features the nine-stage adjustable traction control, which is awesome awesome yes. um, and the rally mode which you know changes your throttle response we also put on a 446 dollar and 99 cents skid plate which is very very substantial yeah this is armor. very needed this is armor yeah it really <laughs> is when you consider like yeah. what's all down there with fuel yeah. tank and engine and everything get it yeah and then you get $78.99 for a KTM air filter, bringing the total as tested to $17,059.97, which is $1,300.30 less, I should say, than the BMW. Yeah. And I think KTM's going to equip these bikes at the dealerships a lot this way. A lot of dealers are going to put that skid plate on. They're going to put that air filter kit on because if you are riding it off-road, both of those things are fairly necessary. The air filter kit makes it much easier to clean a filter and service the whole thing. And the skid plate obviously is protection. If you're buying a KTM or a rally bike of any size and displacement and you're not getting the tech pack and the rally pack, you're missing out on, I would say half the experience. Easily. Easily. It's, it's, it's worth the thousand dollars to get that stuff for sure. If you're already spending 15 K K drop another thousand down and get the rally pack and the tech pack. Totally. Yeah. So really actually, uh, they're, they're, Pretty aligned on price. BMW's premium, but BMW's an expensive brand, so it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so we have two, I guess, ride impressions to give you. I am yeah. not Jesse's level of off-road riding. I am a, I call, I'll call it intermediate off-road uh, adventure rider. Like I can hang with most guys, but, you know, put me in a in a ring with Quinn Cody and I'm going to get knocked out real quick, <laughs> as most people will. Most of us will. And I, on the other hand, do not like riding on the street. It yeah. scares me. And so, I feel uncomfortable doing it. So I would much le- rather be in the dirt picking a bike up than riding on a street and yep. trying to pick a bike up. <laughs> so, okay, so we'll look at you first as the yeah. sort of expert adventure rider. What, what are your thoughts on these two? I have, I have a lot of time on adventure bikes, uh, specifically ones that are tuned for off-road. And it's really my favorite type of riding now, dual sport and adventure bike. Obviously, dirt bikes are fantastic too, but the dual sport and adventure segment just gives you so much more areas to ride, more terrain to ride, more roads to do, and more places to go with your friends. And that's why I ride motorcycles. And the differences between these two bikes is like massive when yeah. you ride them. They are they are not that close. On paper, the horsepower is the same. They don't feel that way. They The, the dimensions are drastically different. We'll talk mm-hmm. about that, I'm sure, as we go there. But that's really where they start playing out. The motor character is considerably different with the KTM's torque being uh, more readily available. And the BMW want more revs. It wants to get a little bit more peaky mm-hmm. uh, sort of engine behavior. But really, engines aside, the engine difference... I could, I could live with either bike, no problem. Yeah. They're both fantastic. We drag raced them through town That's a couple right, yeah. times, and they, and they were remarkably close. Like, yeah. you would be splitting hairs here on an engine performance basis. The quick shifters are both really responsive. Um, the traction control and the throttle settings and the Enduro Pro modes and uh, all, the, all the bells and whistles and the gadgets. Uh, I may have a preference with the KTM electronic uh, navigation because I've had it for five yeah. years. I know how the buttons work. I just got on the BMW, so it's a little foreign to me. Uh, but the dimensions of the bikes and their stability off-road is drastically different. Yeah. The KTM feels like a very tightly wound, uh, high-strung off-road race bike, and the BMW feels like a comfortable 
touring bike with ample suspension travel for most of your off-road obstacles. Yeah. It's way stretched out feeling, has a ton more stability, still f plenty responsive in the turns really, but uh, just loses out a little bit to the KTM when you hit stuff at speed or you're dropping off bigger things or you're going through deeper speed undulations on you know forest roads or stuff like that. The BMW might... Uh, get lazy on you sooner than that, like lazy handling. And plus it'll bottom out quicker where the KTM's looking for that impact, yeah. looking for you to push it that far to where it will really start working well. Yeah. And that's the biggest difference here. If you want to, you want to race, the KTM was built for racing and it really feels like that. And it's silly to say that their street adventure bike was built for racing, but that's the kind DNA behind that thing. And that's, that's how it feels. I found that I'm much more lent towards the BMW. The mm -hmm. BMW reminded me a lot of the Desert X. Uh, Absolutely GK. agree with you 100%. Yes. Yeah. They're both very long and comfortable and stable. Yeah. I think the, I loved the, the directness that you got out of a KTM. Yeah. But for me, the biggest thing was the ergonomics. So, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm probably two, three inches taller than you. Yeah, definitely. I'm 5'10. You're probably 6'1, six, 6'2. Six, yeah. So. So I found like just super cramped on mm -hmm. the, on the KTM, which was I I kind of knew that was going to be the case, but I was surprised that given the, at the amount of riding I'd done on the KTM over in the past that I, it was that pronounced. Yeah, um, it also showed just how roomy and stretched out that BMW is. Definitely, I mean, the they bloody are bars are almost like ape hangers on those things. <laughs> they are. They're built for standing up. That's the way I described the BMW is it was built for somebody to stand up on and be comfortable. Like yeah. right away you stand up on it and I'm like, okay, it's still pretty stretched out for my body size. When I stand up, the bars are pushed forward and the pegs are weirdly under me. Yeah. Uh, like behind my hip yeah. almost. And I'm like, I'm really stretched out here, but the KTM is the opposite. Like I can get crouched and get like aggressive on the KTM and I'm comfortable. And then the BMW, I'm like, Oh, I can kind of relax. I often wonder if <laughs> KTM's ever going to go down that route and just have like 890 that is still retains a lot of that stuff, but is stretched out. I know mm -hmm. people can go and put bar rises on it and change seat heights yeah. and change this and change that, but it's a fair amount to get yourself comfortable on that. And bike. I don't think it'll ever really work that way because uh, as we know the rake angle the wheelbase all that stuff's just tight yeah it's, it, the bike is built for you know hard hits at higher speed honestly it it doesn't necessarily mean that it's more stable at high speeds like head shake or desert speed which it has proven itself being fairly capable at that totally. too yeah. but if you are a uh, average consumer and you're dropping into g outs or hitting creek bottoms and stuff like that that's where the ktm like it it doesn't give into those things it, mm. it pushes through those and it maintains its composure where if you get a little softer it's going to start bouncing back at you and i think the other manufacturers are willing to give that up because they're like that's like the far end of our consumer spectrum that we they can deal with an aftermarket solution to give them more hold up mm. on a bmw f900 to hit a creek crossing if they want to yeah. we're not going to build a bike that performs at that level in our BMW factory. That's up to you, consumer, to solve that. Mm -hmm. And and we're going to get close enough for 99.9% 90 .9 of people, which I think they've done a great job at. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you're spot on with that. Like, I mean, when you're talking about uh, the measurements too, like, so we've got a head angle of 28 degrees versus 26.3. <laughs> it's a big it's difference. It's a big difference, yeah, for the KTM. Yeah. We've also got, what have we got? Seat heights of 34.2 for the BMW, 34.6, a tiny bit taller for the for the KTM. Mm -hmm. This is the big one. Wheelbase, uh, 62.6 inches versus 60.2 for the KTM. So uh, that tells you really what yeah, you that's need to it. know. That's what you feel when you ride it, 100%. Yeah. And, and I didn't even know those dimensions when I wrote you my opinion. And you're like, I made note of this. Here's the paragraph. And I was like, that's exactly what I thought was happening. Yeah. Those numbers make so much sense in my brain right yeah. now. I, I mean, having a higher seat height and a lower wheelbase and a steeper or however you want to explain the the head angle on the KTM being more aggressive. I mean, that that's why the bike handles that way. Yeah. And it's not a mistake by KTM to make it that way. They no. want it that way on purpose. And they have the low slung fuel tank to get the lowest center of gravity. Mm -hmm. And like they're building this bike for, you know, like technical handling, I'll call it. Well, it's funny. Like you only have to look at the advertising of both brands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember yeah. when Adam Riemann, uh, g'day mate, legend. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I remember when Adam Raymond was doing the uh, photo photography for that. I think it was over in Europe somewhere. Yeah. And he's just, oh, like, hucking this bloody thing off. I'm like, 
yeah, I ain't doing that. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But then you see, the, you see with the, the marketing for the BMW and it's like, yeah, I'd probably do that. Yeah. Um, and most people, most people are like that. Most people yeah. aren't Adam or Quinn Cody and they don't jump adventure yeah. bikes on purpose. <laughs> they they want to ride them in comfortable and stand up across dry lake beds. And yeah. the BMW is going to be much more comfortable for most people riding most of the terrain. Yeah. In a, in a I, I have my doubts on the stability. Oh, sorry. Uh, solidity. There we go. Got it out. Yeah. Of the BMW versus the KTM. I think uh, the, BMW, the, the, the KTM feels just feels a lot more solid. Better yeah, build, I agree. Build quality. Mm-hmm. The BMW almost it doesn't it's not toyish that's not the right way but it just doesn't feel as quite as chunky and as solid as well yeah. sort of constructed as the KTM. I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the the level they're expecting the bike to be pushed to in the development and the design of that bike but also the bike's been around since 2017 if there was a loose part on that thing it's yeah. fixed if there was something that falls off or flexes wrong and fatigues it's not on there anymore. Yeah. It's, it's had some time. The BMW's brand new, ground yeah, up from right. the old F850. And I said, in my opinion too, there was not a mid-level BMW I would choose to ride in the past. God, no. I rode the 600 Dakars and 650s and all these 7s and 8s, and they've just been uninspiring, to say the least. And this <laughs> is the first BMW mid-size adventure bike that's been like, I might actually choose that to take riding other than a Boxer, yeah. other than a GS, like yeah. 1300. I might. Well, I probably wouldn't because the GS is so amazing. Well, you wait till the 1300 Adventure oh, comes out with the big, big bloody Robocop looking dimensions yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah. I can't wait so to kudos, that. honestly, that's a good point. Like kudos to BMW for coming in and bringing new stuff to this segment. Yeah. I mean, I didn't see it coming and I saw that bike. I think the first time I saw it, uh, Kit went to the intro, but I... Um, JD Beach was riding it at the Arai intro. It's a great looking bike. The bike looks fantastic. It looks rally-esque. It looks aggressive off-road. It looks like something you can go around the world on. It doesn't look like a toy like the old mid-level BMW stuff. And uh, it's got the comfort, I think, that it's going to make a lot of people happy. Yep. Yep. So uh, if we're we're going to buy them, if we're throwing down our own cash, which one are you going for? You know, I'm not very smart, so I'll probably just beat myself up on a KTM for a long time. Um, (laughs) There's a couple things. The The worst part about the KTM is the harsh suspension feel, I think. Yep. That's going to turn off the most amount of people when they get on it. The the somewhat twitchy handling, you, you can get over that after you don't ride a very stable long travel bike for a long time. Um, but the suspension's harsh. It's harsh yeah. on the road. It's harsh in parking lots. It's harsh on dirt roads and yeah. gravel. And then it's only not harsh until you hit something big. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I'm glad that was there. Yeah. Uh, you can fix that with a massive upgrade to their cone valve suspension that gives you like 20 mil more travel and it makes everything great. So what's that going to cost you? It's over five grand. Oh, yeah. So yeah. that's going to throw you out to what? Yeah, $20,000. 20 yeah. yeah. So that's that's a solution. It's not a, a yeah. feasible solution for most people. Um, but I think that where I want to ride adventure bikes, I'm still going to be defaulting to hitting stuff a little harder. And I want the KTM to do that. And the sit down ergonomics of the BMW just don't fit me because I'm only yeah. 5'10". I think they're just too stretched out a little bit for me to be totally comfortable. So I'd probably keep buying a KTM and my wrist would probably just keep hurting <laughs> <laughs> as I ride it through town. Fair enough. <laughs> I think um, I'm probably leaning to the BMW, but only by a little bit because yeah. it's... It's more turnkey for what I for want. Sure, yeah. I think if I were to buy the KTM, I would need to throw a fair amount at it, like especially like stretching the thing. Yeah, out. you need to get some ergo to fit yeah, you. Those that suspension would be a oh, would be a definite because yeah, on just you when we were riding down those dirt roads and you hit those little sort of G out things, you get massive shocks yeah. that that sort of what 30, 40 mile an hour. Yeah, and that sucked. It's but the small you, medium bumps that really hurt you on the KTM, yeah. and I'm sure you could. You know, call up a WP authorized center, like a, a dealership that you're with or solid performance and have them revalve it. And it'll yeah. probably get better and solve a lot of those. But Look, the way it comes stock, it's it's harsh. I have no doubt that the KTM has more potential over a longer, over a wider spec of stuff yeah. than the BMW does. I can, if I bought a KTM, I know that I could do absolutely everything. Yes. But I would need to have put more into it. Whereas... Mm-hmm. At my age and knowing what I can and can't do, yeah. I know I could get on the BMW and I could just put gas in the thing, make sure the tire pressure is good and just I could do 99.2% of everything yeah. that I need to do. Yeah, you're going to bottom out a little bit sooner yeah. on stuff. And I, I also think that GS Trophy red, white, and blue looks Oof. pretty damn good. So, 
<laughs> it looks better than the KTM. The yeah. KTM is not the best looking bike. Yeah. It's some of the best performing, but the BMW came in. It's a looker. I yeah. love the way it looks. So, yeah. all right, there you have it, guys and girls. That's that's our quick wrap up of the test. If you want to see it, you can just see the, the photography version of what we've just been looking at. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, we'll have lots more content coming for you at cyclenews.com. Check out all the socials and all the good stuff, and we'll see you again soon. Cheers.